Mail bag time. I've also got a piece of test gear which we're going to show you as well. We're going to chuck it on the bench after we've done this stuff. So make sure you stick around to find out what that is. That's something we'll be repairing in the future. So stick around. Let's find out what's in these ones. There will probably be links down below for various items that I show here as well. If it's something I can put a link to, or if it's something I think it's worth a link to at least, there will be a link down below for it. 30 amp current shunt. Very nice. Hmm, missing terminal. Don't remember seeing that. Anyway, not going to matter that much anyway. Screw terminals. The idea of this is that you can plug this into a multimeter and you put your current through these terminals here and it will output one millivolt per amp. So you can use this on a piece of gear and actually measure high currents with a multimeter, which is very nice. And it can do 15 amps continuously and 30 amps for 15 minutes maximum, which is quite impressive actually. So DC 1 kilohertz, 0.3% accuracy, and above that to 5 kilohertz is 5% accuracy. So obviously the AC side of it is not so good, but uh, DC should be pretty good. Now I've got this because I don't actually have anything I can measure high currents with. That's why I got this. Now these are normally quite expensive. This was more than I wanted to pay for it, but certainly not the worst prices on eBay. I'll have to check to see if this bit's missing. And there is a picture for the listing. And you can see it's got both parts on it. So they didn't send me the one which was in the listing. That's always interesting, isn't it? Picture of the rear of my unit. It's not the same one. Oh well, I still didn't pay too much for that thing, so it's probably okay, I suppose, but... It's a shame it isn't quite the one that was pictured. I might have to see if I can lodge a claim with that. Oh. I'm not sure they felt they need to put it inside a plastic bag as well. Anyway, <laughs> a bag inside a box inside of... Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh look, it's inside another bag. SMA 10 watt 30 dB DC to 4 gigahertz attenuator, apparently. So SMA there, and that side. So I've already showed some other ones which are like 10 dB, 20 and 6 dB attenuators. So I've also got a 30 at the same time. Hopefully they do actually do what I say they do, but again, as I said before in the last mailbag, well mailbag before that one I think it was, attenuators, handy things to have. It's best to put an attenuator in and be careful, not blow up equipment, then take the risk. So, have them on hand. Oh, it's a little basic gauge set for doing AC stuff. So, a gauge. We have a tapping adapter which goes into a top of a air conditioning, like a refrigerant can. In this case, it's an R134. It's got a little piercing needle that goes into the can. So, you screw it onto the can and then you screw it, wind that in, that pierces the can, and you wind it back out again. The refrigerant can travel up here to the gauge to this attachment here for topping up AC systems on cars. This is a really budget way of doing it. I do actually have better gear. I bought this one a while ago and I was not quite sure what I was going to do. And this one took the longest to arrive. I don't really need it now. Maybe the tapping for the can would be handy. But I've just got one of those as well, so probably not. I think I've got a bit carried away with the AC stuff. Tread depth gauges. I showed some in a previous mail bag a couple of years ago, I think. It's all plastic ones. These ones are different. So it's got a plunger. So you put it on the, on the treads of your tyre and you can push this in and that goes into your tread and it tells you how much depth you've got on your tread. You know, if you've only got 1.6mm then you've got a problem. <laughs> or less than that. It says 30 seconds around all, all of these. All of these say 30 seconds. So is that an inch scale, not a millimetre scale? It must be. That's a bloody annoying. That's the same. Yeah, same as well. Okay, so as it goes around, the scale shifts. That's what happens. So you line up to the scale in the relative position. But it's in inches, not millimetres. I'm pretty sure the one I purchased said millimetres on it. Damn it. You suppose it's okay if you're in America or something. Alright, some more clips. I've got a bit carried away buying clips for cars. <laughs> I think this must be all on by now. I did something in my last mail bag. But these got different types. Yeah, you've got these like locking ones, which I've now dropped on the floor and never see again. This kind of locking one, just a big assortment, which is all thrown together in one box, it seems. It's all mixed up. Well, that's nice. I needed some clips, so I bought some. And I bought some more, and I bought some more, because all seem to be slightly different. I've got loads now. I bet I still don't have the right one, though. So this box seemed to have had an interesting trip.
Oh, it's gone everywhere. Oh dear. It's just a bunch more lawnmower drawers. I've shown this previously in the mail bags and gone on about them forever. So E32 900T 20D. These are 100 milliwatt lawnmower modules. And these cover two bands from about 868 megahertz up to 915 megahertz, those bands at least. But it actually covers further than that. Each side is all the same one, I think. Yeah, so a bunch of them. I'll just been stocking up. Not sure what's in here. I know what's in here. These are for my car. So these are steering wheel controls. So my car has controls on it already, like the left ones are all here on my car, and these two are on my car. Doesn't have anything up here. So what I actually wanted to do is add these controls to my car. So you have to get the whole set like this and swap the whole thing out though. These are aftermarket ones, these aren't originals. In theory they should work. It's for a Toyota Orion, a bit like a Camry. So you control display and hands-free stuff for the Bluetooth talking on the phone and air conditioning controls, stereo controls. What's this one? Ah oh, right, okay. Now because I wasn't sure what I actually needed, it also came with this, which is mounts on the steering wheel shaft, and this is actually a spiral, basically like a spring I suppose. This will turn with the steering wheel on one side and you've got the connections to go through to the car. Some of this is obviously airbag connections, that's what these ones will be for. But I may not even need this. At the very least I've got one which is aftermarket, which would be a spare. I may not even need this. Hopefully I don't, because that's a bit of effort to pull that apart. I'll take the steering wheel off. But these, it's got to pull the steering wheel apart. What's much of a problem? This plug goes into here, goes into that one there, like that. Not the one over here. It's also one goes into the actual body connections. Now here's a piece of test gear I promised at the very beginning. Again, I sourced this locally. I was quite lucky to find a few things recently which were of reasonable prices and at least cheap enough for me to consider buying them even though they're not really things I'd necessarily need to use or really have much of a need for. Maybe from time to time you might want something nice, but. So this is a HP, as you can see over here, 3406A broadband sampling voltmeter. So it's got this special little probe here. We've got my cat. Just see now. So you've got line power here. So that's actually off when it's pushed in, interestingly. And then as you push these in, it changes ranges. It only does very low voltages. That's actually three, not a point three. There's a nice scratch on it. But that's actually three volts max there. The minimum is one millivolt. Full scale, of course. And you've got zero ring on here too. So you've got a probe here, which plugs into there to calibrate it. You have to push it right in. And um, there's this calibration adjustment here. So I'll be doing a full video on this thing at some point to pull it apart, refurbish it, Check its functionality and that sort of stuff. It's interesting seeing how this piece of test gear works. And then maybe subscribe for that if you're not already subscribed. But I'm not quite sure how soon I'll be doing this one. I've got a several bits of test gear to do. I'll probably do the smaller stuff first, get it out of the way, and then I'll start doing some bigger stuff. It shouldn't be too far away. Maybe next month or so. Maybe two months. We'll see. This is on my pile of things to fix. I assume it even doesn't work. It may even work fine. I don't know. But I'll have to check all that out. But again, this is locally sourced, so and it's calibrated at some point. It's got a calibration seal on there, on the top anyway, over there. And this is uh, 1977 is the year of this thing, 1977, based on the seal number, stick on the back. Last calibration, it's a 2000, well basically 2000, it's got 99 up there. Um, is that one there? So yeah, it's been a while since it's been used, I think. It may not even work, who knows? We'll find out. So you can check out the other videos down below for other things you might be interested in. Subscribe over here, click the bell icon if you want to get notified. Over here is a Patreon support link if you want to click on that and support me through donations with Patreon. Also to buy a bit of test gear like this to fix and do videos about. See you later.